The Basel Committee's standardised approach for measuring counterparty credit risk exposures, SACA, will herald a step change in the way banks measure and manage counterparty credit risk. It will replace the previous current exposure method and has been developed as a more risk sensitive but consistent alternative to previous methodologies. SACA is already live in some jurisdictions, including Canada and Japan, and is due to go live in Europe by the end of June 2021 and in the US in January 2022. To discuss SACA in more detail, I'm joined by Tobias Becker, Head of Business Development at Quantile. Tobias, thanks for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. So let's start by asking what are the key elements of SACA and how is it different from the previous current exposure method? SACR, or SACCR, stands for Standardized Approach to Counterparty Credit Risk. So it's about measuring not market risk or operational risk, but credit risk, and specifically within credit risk, counterparty credit risk, such as the risk that arises out of derivative trades. Um, and it's also a standardized approach. That's the SA in SACCR or SACR. Um, so it means uh, it is not one of these internal models uh, which are developed in-house and might be very bespoke, but it is standardized across the industry. Um, what is different from the previous model, you mentioned the current exposure method, that it is a risk-sensitive mo model, and that is a big step change uh, for the industry. The previous model was very much focused on derivative notionals. Um, it was not focused on risk exposures, whether you're long or whether you're short, but just notional exposures, whereas SACCR really focuses in on what is your actual risk coming out of derivatives um, and, uh, and therefore gives you uh, the benefit of risk netting, but also punishes you when you have very directional exposures. And how would you say that SACA will impact on derivatives market participants? So... As discussed already, uh, SACR has this focus on risk and not notionals. Um, as a simple formula, one could say one-way losers, two-way wins. Um, that means if you are a counterparty which has one-way directional exposures, um, then you're going to see uh, likely see an uptick in capital requirements, and that's very much the regulatory intention here. Whereas when you're a two-way counterparty um, with balanced exposures, um, you will benefit from the introduction of this model. And that's, again, very much the thinking behind introducing this model. Reward balanced exposures and maybe punish a directional, uh, strong directional exposures. And I mentioned earlier the, uh, the rules are in, for, in place in some jurisdictions um, and still to come in in others. Um, can you give us an overview of the timeline for implementation globally and how jurisdictions are approaching this? Sure. Um, SACCR is really the final puzzle piece in uh, in regulation, which followed the financial crisis of 2002, uh, 2008, around uh, the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy, when it became clear that traditional risk management models, um, but also more recent models such as the internal approaches, did not perform as intended by the regulator. Um, it was formulated uh, about seven, eight years ago already. So it's been uh, on the table for quite a while, but only very recently um, the introduction has started, very much led by uh, smaller jurisdictions, for example, in Australia or Canada and also Switzerland, sometimes on a compulsory basis, sometimes on a voluntary adoption basis. But it's fair to say that this year, 2021, shapes up to be the year of SACR. Um, uh, we will see a Big Bang introduction on a single date in June this year, not very far away. Um, and uh, in the US, uh, the, uh, the window to adopt this new model has been open for over a year now. Um, it, the compulsory date is the 1st of January 2022, same for the UK. So fair to say things will play out over the next uh, couple of months um, and we will start the next year uh, globally uh, fully on, on this model. So it's going to be a busy few months for market participants. Um, how would you say they should be preparing for implementation and how will they need to manage their capital requirements under the new framework? If you want to prepare for the introduction of SACCR, then you know, be aware it's a risk-based model. Uh, so your tools will, will all be around risk management. I've mentioned uh, that uh, central clearing might be a, uh, a big winner in uh, this picture. So make sure that you have the ability to uh, balance your exposures into central clearing houses, but also to participate in active risk management um, between counterparties, for example, in multilateral risk rebalancing uh, exercises, which frequently happen between, uh, between banks, between market participants. Um, 
in other words, be ready for more active risk management because you will be rewarded um, with capital with lower capital requirements if you participate uh, in active risk management. And that's a big step forward for us as an industry. The other uh, thing uh, to mention is SACCR really gives us a common risk management language across uh, the industry that we were lacking. Um, uh, so we can finally, um, on a global scale, uh, exchange risks and net down risk and untangle the web of interconnectivity between uh, financial market participants using a common language. Um, it might be a basic and standardized common language, but it is a common language and that is a big step forward in, in risk management. Well, that's about all we have time for. Tobias, thank you for joining me and thanks also for participating and, and supporting this year's AGM. Thank you, Joel.